What you doing? Well, today I'm planning to paint with Blender. Okay. I'll be using this to watch your videos. Well, hello everybody, this is Blender Pretender. Playing with Blender. Uh, playing with Blender uh, and posting it online because it's fun. Um, posting it for posteri posterity, really, playing with Blender for fun and uh, using my Blender powers for good. Always for good, never for evil, right? Uh, hello, everybody. This is Blender Pretender. Today is March. Today, today is March uh, 26th. It's Friday. And um, today it's a live stream day. So it's, it's uh, 9 o'clock today, um, uh, a little earlier, just trying to get underneath uh, the all of the... Um, busy use of the uh, of the internet and uh, so today what I have is I plan to uh, show a time-lapse video of painting with, of painting with blender so what I've been doing lately is is um, is uh, just uh, doing some studies to see if I can get uh, better at painting with with blender not just blender but just painting in general so I decided to, to test uh, my, uh, not to test, but be really to push my skills uh, to try to you know, do more portraits, paintings, and stuff like that, because when we work with uh, 3D so much, we kind of get away from it, uh, from the aspects of, of actually generating art and so on. So, um, and so that's what I plan to show. This uh, image right here is what I'm going to show. The time lapse does uh, this image right here. So, um, um, what I do is, uh, uh, when I, when an image, when I when I, when a photo comes across, when I come across a photo rather, that I that I uh, think it's interesting to try to you know draw or, or or try to replicate or copy or whatever, I'll take it and I'll do a study from it. So the way this started, this started as a study just to see if I could do uh, get the likeness in about an hour, and then I decided to work it more into a finished portrait painting, and I use Blender for it. So let me go now, and I'm trying to figure this out. What I'm going to do is play the video from um, from just the Windows player here. So I'm hoping that the compression is not going to be too, too uh, terrible and things can be discerned as to what's happening. The video itself is playing at, um, is going to be playing at six and a half times faster than regular speed. And, you know, we'll see how it goes. It gets kind of long, but, but it's also, you know, just just enough so that you can see what um, what's happening uh, for for you know whoever wants to see what's happening there. So I could have done a video a uh, time lapse to get into ten minutes, five minutes, and sometimes those look uh, pretty pretty great. But a lot of stuff is just goes by really really fast. So what I'm doing here is I'm working and I'm going to narrate it as I go along. That's that's part of the live stream. Just be you know here and narrate it the way I normally do, except that that way I only do it once. And of course, if anybody wants to join, I did advertise this uh, to begin with. If anybody wants to join in the chat, you know, that's I'm going to be paying more attention to the stream health in the chat rather than working all the time because most of my live streams, that's what I do. And I just get preoccupied with what I'm doing and not paying attention to everything else. So, um, yeah, so what's happening here is that I'm using my, my template. I have a template file that I have saved up that has uh, my 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 pencils and so on. I call it pencils, but it has the it has the uh, the pens set up the way that I like them, and um, and it's got uh, an image plane with 30 image textures in it that serve as layers, and so that's what can be seen at the right. I'm working on, you know, in loose quotes, layer five uh, painting there. And so what it, this is basically the start where I'm doing the black and white. So this is the study portion of it. The goal initially was to um, just using my 
uh, and I'm using loose, qu loose quotes also my pencil tool in Blender is just to draw um, a black and white uh, likeness of the image that came across and I just thought it was interesting because of the expression that's happening there um, the image is from somebody in St. Patrick's Day I guess they were just having fun and took a picture of somebody with this little uh, green hat it's a little bit too small for their for their head you know but it's just that's that's how that's how it um, that's what makes it funny and um, so I said I wonder if I can reproduce that expression at least in black and white and so that's what that's what was my goal I recorded that real time really is what I did I recorded real time and I was ready to post but I decided no I'm not going to um, I changed my mind I decided to move into doing color for it so and that's what's seen right now it's just basically working you know very uh, while looking at the reference image I'm working uh, the reference image is off to another monitor and then I'm just trying to just you know draw it and rough it in and so the tools that I'm using there mostly are just the pencil tool which is just the texture draw brush with a texture applied to it which is uh, one of the standard blender textures that, that, that come in there so that it's giving it a little bit of you know seeming uh, or meaning to uh, look like it's it seems like it has roughness right uh, as you would with when you're drawing with a paper and then the other tool that I'm using is just blurring blur there you go that's another blur tool that uh, very quickly very roughly goes there and then the eraser so the way that starts is with a um, with a um, let me put this in big screen <laughs> as I'm talking I got a little um, little spray on my screen uh, so now you can see that full screen um, and um, yeah the eraser so using basically all just those three tools to try to see if I could get the likeness and so I worked for about an hour and a half I think on this uh, while recording it live uh, working in real time but then uh, when I when I finished with this I decided no I'm going to see if I can turn it into an actual full painting which is fine I mean I'll go I'll continue um, um, I'll continue to uh, um, <laughs> I see that there's hello uh, hello I see somebody's already on the chat and I have a question so that's why I got distracted and I'll I'll address that right now I said the, the question is why do you use onion uh, why don't you use onion skin and uh, I'll address right now maybe you can uh, illustrate to me what uh, or maybe just explain to me what you mean by onion skin um, uh, for the um, for painting purposes at least I mean onion skinning um, uh, would be like uh, for animation with the way I understand it for animation with um, uh, grease pencil or, or onion skinning is the term for animation in general but it's an option available in grease pencil maybe you can we can chat about that and you can just explain what you mean so what I did right there now I realized that I started too high so it's just a square you know square uh, um, plane and I started too high so what I did is I just want to relocate it and what I did is a a, uh, a render of it and I brought it in image as a plane and I subdivided it really quick and it went by very very quick and now I'm using the sculpting tools so I brought in image as a, image as a plane and sculpt using the sculpting tools to move it move the uh, the um, some of the features the way I want to because in my drawing I found it, it you know sometimes it's easier to do that versus erase and draw again and um, and so then do an, a re-render and then bring it into you know basically reload it as one of the layers is what I did so um, and I kept the original layer it's there but it's just hidden it's turned off but then it's, this has been reloaded. And what I'm doing there is going underneath the layer and drawing drawing underneath it with gray. So for the portraits or just any drawing really, I, I found that it's better to work with a gray, gray background, gray canvas, um, because uh, it doesn't get too bright. It doesn't really blow out your, your, your perception, you know, your, as you're drawing. And then um, in terms of a portrait for example all the skin tone is a lot of it is gray very little of it is actually white so if you start with white you're gonna have to fill all that in so in this case now in a layer on top of it now I'm just adding the white for the highlights and all this is prepped so that you can then start uh, blurring it or smearing it so that it gets a little bit more smooth um, and but in terms of the times um, you'll see here in a minute um, um, as long as you get the likeness 
that's enough for the study for me because that's really what I want to tackle, be able to see something and paint it and draw it and draw it. And the, the more you do it, the, the faster you, you try to push yourself, even though it may look sloppy in some cases, you'll find out that then when you take your time to do something, it will come out, um, uh, it'll come out, um, uh, I, I saw the question again. Sorry, I get distracted real easy. So it'll come out uh, better once you do it slowly, once you kind of push yourself a little bit, um, you know, farther than, than than your capabilities. So let me see. Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm not sure if I'm reading the name right, but I think it says Icarumbas. But uh, yeah, he, so, so, so you're asking, uh, or you're saying a way to trace the image instead of trying to use 2D monitor. Um, a way to trace the image. Oh, okay, yes, to trace the image. Um, yes, I don't want to. I can trace the image. Yes, I can bring in the image. I can trace the image. I can do all those kinds of things. I don't want to. This starts to me, for me, as an exercise to try to push myself to be able to reproduce the likeness by looking at it and drawing it. Yes, I could. I could do. There, there's, by the way, yes, uh, you can. There's all sorts of tool in Blender where you can bring in the image. You can trace it. You can use it as a reference. You all sorts of things uh, that 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 are um, ways to get. Uh, work done fast, and so if you're if you're already an accomplished artist and you're needing to get work done fast, that's that's the way to go. I'm not saying that's not the way to go. This is just uh, personal endeavors. What I'm doing there is that that's when I started to say, no, nah, I'm going to color it. And I did say that during the live during while I was recording it live, I said I'm going to see if I can color it, and I'm going to see if I can add some color real quick. And so the approach that I took was a little different because. Than, than the portrait that I did for Tan a few videos back. Because when I did that portrait, there's 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 a couple of ways to approach this when you're doing the, 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 the drawing, the painting, is that you can do the black and white and then use the black and white to multiply that as a layer over the color. And it gives you the shadows. In this case, I had gone through already and done the render with the gray as a background and the, the black and the white for the, you know, for the shadows and the highlights. And I had decided then uh, to colorize it. There's a little bit of a difference, I think, that's going to show in the results. Uh, right there, I'm just playing with the... Uh, I realized I didn't, uh, I didn't highlight that cheek because it just didn't pop out at me while I was painting beforehand. So I decided I need to highlight that cheek. So it gives it that curve, right? Because it was missing. And there I'm pointing out, I do have a clock that runs there, but it, it gets blurred out with a gray background. Um, and that clock is... Um, um, you know, updated to the new windows. So it kind of takes that, 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 you know, it got bigger. And so I tried to make it smaller. So you can't really read it. It's just the windows clock that shows on here. And, you know, they, they changed it. Windows changed it. It used to be smaller, like a corner that I could put in the corner. Anyways, so it kind of gets in the way, but that's the, that's what it is. Um, yeah. So I decided there, now what I'm doing there is I'm using masks basically to separate the layers. Uh, again, this is now moving forward in this next day and say, well, I'm going to work this one through, and the, at this point, I just started uh, recording time lapse. No longer am I doing, you know, a narration while I'm painting that kind of stuff. And so, what's going to happen is that I'm going to be doing it at my pace, time lapse, and then stopping, and then, and then, um, and then uh, stopping, and then doing, um, you know, just, um, yeah, doing doing life things, you know, that you need to do is basically taking breaks. So that clock is no longer going to be very relevant because it's going to be just jumping, you know, having big jumps and stuff. But uh, so, yes. So, um, by the way, I see that nice work. Thank you very much. Um, and I mean, I'm surprised that we can get this with Blender, <laughs> to be honest. I'm surprised that I can get this with Blender. I've uh, practiced a little bit with uh, Krita and it's, the tools there for painting are just way, way, uh, you know, grades above above this. But, but it, you know... I, the reason that I, I stubbornly decided to continue uh, playing with this is because I have this set up so that I can apply the same texture to a 3D model. And so if I ever have a 3D model where I want to add grime and all these things, the best way to do that is not to paint it in a single layer, is to use layers the way I'm doing right now. And so, and so yes, um, um, I'm, I'm, I'm liking it. I'm getting, you know, the more I'm working with it, I'm liking it even though it's not as efficient as say Photoshop or Krita. Like uh, when the image gets larger, you get your, your your pen gets large, 
um, the computer slows down because it's obviously it's the program is interpreting what your brush stroke is from your screen view to what it wants to manipulate on the plane. So it's doing, I think it's doing double duty, right? The, the, the crunching the numbers so it knows what to represent. Right there I'm using a curve for masks. So um, yeah, masks are going to become important here, at least the way I started working this because because um, because these are fake layers that I set up in Blender. They're just image textures. I can't really uh, go back and you know change the layers like you do in Photoshop. So it's just basically it's just a moving forward kind of thing. And if I need to go forward, um, sometimes I'll start saving some masks because um, they they help, right? So that you can um, work on certain parts and not others because you can't really just sometimes just jump back to a layer and bring it up and 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 uh, turn it into a, uh, uh, you know, lock the layer so you don't work on the others, like you do in other programs, that kind of stuff. But, uh, I mean, work around is just lower, but it's just creating masks. And so, um, yeah, so there I started focusing on the hat a little bit, um, knowing that I'm going to work it. Normally, I wouldn't do this much work on it, but knowing that I'm going to work it to where it's a finished product, I decided to take some time into actually working the edges of the hat and, and working the shadows of the hat. Um, that's just me. Um, I'm sure that other artists that are, um, you know, more accomplished would be able to have a better perception of, um, of, of the, you know, the darkness that they need on that color. But for me, it's like, if I'm going to get the shadow on the face, right, I need to, I need to somehow also, uh, be able to appreciate the shadow that's under the hat, um, because they kind of, they kind of help, they help each other, you know, they, they, to, to be a convincing image. So I go back to the hat and I start working on that to just to make it a little darker because I know that it's casting shadow down onto the face and I need to make it work, right? So it's just those those things that I have to um, have to do for me for my own perception. So um, yeah, I'm just finding that a lot of this stuff uh, is just basically learning how to um, appreciate your own perception of things and how they change. For example, as I'm working with this, because this now is taking a little. Uh, longer in terms of breadth of time because I either take breaks or like for example I'll go watch a movie <laughs> halfway I'll I'll stop it and I'll and I'll stop and I say I gotta take a break I'll go watch it uh, not a movie but I these this the, the, that that weekend by the way I watched I binge watched the Formula One racing on Netflix <laughs> so I I found that interesting and uh, but you know you binge it's not like binge watching but you go and watch a few and then you come back and do something you go and watch them more and stuff like that so that's what I mean by life things. Um, so, okay, what I'm going to do here is going to seem kind of weird, but what I'm doing is that I find that for me, it's like, I think I want to make him a little, uh, uh, basically scale him on the Y axis, but not really in the Y axis because his health is head is tilted. So what I did is I created a plane to create a uh, transform orientation on which I can then scale along that one, or rather rotate the plane on that one so that it basically looks like it's a scale. And it went, and I made sure that it was carefully around the eyes. Right there, I'm just going through the compositor to <laughs> give myself some notes too, using the annotation tool, in case I ever wanna go back. But uh, the way that this works is like, let's say once you make the mistake and you're going forward, it's very hard to actually go back. You'd spend a lot of time. So it's just one of those, just move forward, move forward, move forward, like a like a painting, like a painting where you you can easily screw it up. <laughs> uh, uh, okay, so now um, after I colorized it, that I colorized it with a layer basically, and 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 started getting into the you know cleaning up the edges and everything. Um, in this case, I'm just making sure that the eyes aren't so you know odd because they were odd because they weren't really worked out. Um, for portraits, the eyes are very important. <laughs> you got to get them right. And in this case, I think I did not get them right. So if somebody were to ask me, by the way, if does this look like the image that I paint that, that I used as a reference, the answer is I would say honestly, 50-50. Uh, not sure that I nailed it. Um, and that's just that's just the way it is, you know. Um, but it's good practice, you know, just to keep going, just to finish it um, once you have it. Um, uh, practice to you know just to get the portrait done but does it does it really nail his 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 likeness 50 mm, 50 um and uh what i was getting at is that the eyes basically just the eyes you know just the size of those 
of those eyes relative to the lids and everything they they basically just change the character of the image you know plenty so and, and the other thing is that the image that i was working on was obviously a, a picture that was snapped with a telephone and it was a, an image of i would say half of the body so from if you can think of you know from from your you know your belt line going up probably a little bit below the belt line going up um so the, the image of the face there itself is kind of pixelated so even though you can zoom in and use the face as a reference it's kind of pixelated so you don't have the detail that you're seeing in here and so i'm making it up i'm basically making it up as i go along the detail of the eyes where the eyelids you can discern where the eyelids have the wrinkles but you know some of the other stuff you just have to make it up um and and try to get some of these shadows that uh indicate the form of the face just try to get them in the right spot and try to get them subtle as subtle as they are in some cases and and that's the hard part especially when you start with black and white or rather you're doing it just in in uh in uh in in black and white let's say um is is certain things that we see i think that we perceive this is my my thought certain things that we perceive and we perceive with um to have some sort of contrast of 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 um of shading but sometimes it could just be the colors that you know that, that are kind of working that to give you a a uh, perception that that there are so the black and white is obviously important because uh, you know when you work with values only it's important because that's how you start discerning or understanding how to do form right we like everybody must have had those those initial exercises in class where you had to do a circle or a, a cylinder, um, I mean, not a circle, a sphere or a cylinder and shade it so it looks like a sphere and it looks like a cylinder and those kinds of things. Those are obviously the basic basic things. And then obviously when you get into the shapes and the forms of faces and working with the value, well, you know, it's easy for us to get fooled. Uh, what I'm noticing there is that obviously in proportions, um, I, I went more by the image than trying to think about, you know, actual proportions for the face. And I'm noticing that the ear is just way too high on that side. And I'm just, in this case, I'm erasing and drawing just to bring it back down. Bring it down and try to make them level where they are in terms of proportions. This person is also, it, it won't be convincing if you give them a tiny ear because this person is obviously not a young person, you know. And at the end result, you see the beard and everything. So this person is not a young person. So um, as you get older, you get bigger and bigger earlobes. People get bigger and bigger earlobes. They get bigger and bigger noses and also. So... It seems, you know, it just seems that way, but um, I think it's just the way that, you know, your tissue ages and stuff, right? So those are the things that come and, in, 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 you know, into, into um, having that very subtle significance of giving you the suggestion of, of, of all the things that we take for granted. We, when, in our perception, we see those things and we, we know them to be true, but we don't know why until you start trying to paint them and try to realize why certain things just don't match. I mean, on the very basic level, you can go back and just put a drawing on a grid or trace it or stuff like that that was being discussed earlier. Um, but only when you try to reproduce it, uh, you know, just from, from looking at it without actual tracing and so on. Or using some of those devices, because you have devices that you can use where you look through uh, one eye at the image and the other eye, you look at your canvas. Uh, so, I mean, those are those, that would be, I uh, that would be um, uh, tools to help. I never had one of those, but I, I did when I was back in the '90s. I did buy what were called back then opaque projectors, and you basically had a very bright lamp that uh, lit up a picture, and the projector would project onto a canvas or, or a wall or wherever it is that you wanted to. Uh, this is before we had the projectors of today, of course, but um, so, you know, just ways of, 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 of cheating, you could call it cheating, but basically to expedite the work just so that you don't have to, um, like if you got work to do, you don't have to prove to anybody that you can do it. In this case, I'm showing it right here and I'm explaining that I'm doing it because it's like practicing an instrument. It's like practicing anything. You have to practice it in order to be uh, to maintain uh, the you know the the ability to do it, um, and I'm finding that as I get older, it's not as easy as it was when I was younger. So when I was younger, I 
I, I feel that when I was younger, I was able to reproduce somebody's likeness by looking at them, even like if somebody had were to sit before me. I was I felt like I was able, I feel now, I'm sorry, like I was able to do it easier then. And now it's really taking more of an effort. <laughs> but that's just what it is. You know, that's how it is. Besides, too much too much 3D and stuff like that, you know, obviously gets you to that gets you to that point where it's like the computers are gonna be the tool. Um, but um, even for the good 3D artists, I think some of so the ones that I see that are really you know stand out. Um, to me, it almost it's it's it seems like it's inherent in their their uh, understanding of proportion, understanding of all these things that come together to make it work. And so then, you know, I go and I try to do it and it's like, why isn't it working? It's like, because I'm not there yet to really have an understanding how, you know, this size of the model is going to fit with this one and how big should I make this and all, all the things that come into play, which are essentially just art stuff. A lot of, sm a lot of uh, smoothing here is what is happening. Basically, now I have the, the one layer, so I flatten them to the, supposedly flatten them to that one layer that I'm working with. And uh, you can see just smoothing and drawing. As I'm drawing, what I'm doing is I'm just copying the color from from the um, from the adjacent, the adjoining. You know, I just do a, a color picker. It's it's done really fast, by the way, because I'm using the S, just the S. Uh, as as you got your cursor there, you hit S and it does the color picker. Um, and that only works if you're on the same like the drawing actually has color information the actual image texture i'm sorry so if your image texture is is like uh black with a complete alpha it's only going to pick up black <laughs> so in this case because they all got flattened earlier and now i'm just smearing and drawing so i'm going to move on to the hair right there it looks like just to try to get some of the hair going and the way to work hair especially like this for example right there you can see the um the sideburns where they come down sideburns for people usually aren't that dense so it'll take more effort just to try to draw those without being so dense but i'm not really focusing on that uh, i'm talking where they come into the ear right there so the look that you end up is where it looks pretty dense and you, to me i'd like i like to explore away not just to get away from that or or like the eyebrows as well because sometimes they're not as dense and you could see through them you can see the skin below but those are things that, you know, you can take your time to do. But to do the hair is basically just, you know, try to draw the strokes in the direction. And then I went to like a finer point that I have, which is really just a, a, a different fall off on the pen. It gives you like a, like a finer point. And then just start drawing um, on them. And then over that, and that's a new layer, right, by the way. That's separated. That's a layer that's on top. Over that, uh, those fine point lines, you'll see that again. So, for example, I'm going to reproduce it here. It's uh, drawing here with the, you know, in loose quotes, the pencil, just to try to get an idea as to where they go, right? Still letting some of the under uh, drawing show. So I'm not completely, you know, blowing it out with that pencil. Then I go to the next layer over, and now I'm using the fine point pen. And now I'm just, just randomly putting, you know, uh, what would be the hairs and the hair directions. Uh, it can't be seen there, but I think what I did there is I'm also using a swapping. Uh, uh, most most programs have like the foreground and background color kind of stuff. Blender has that as well. And so foreground and background color is, um, is, is swapped in Blender with the X. So it may not be visible there, but as I was putting the individual ones, I was swapping them. And so and you can see then I blurred it and blurred it just to stretch them out a little bit. And then I use the overlay to give them just that very little highlight. So I'm actually drawing with the overlay blending mode. Uh, I may have done with some multiply as well. I'm not sure it went really fast, but that's how you get the look that you have that little fur just showing there. Right. Oh, excuse me. Um, and um, all right. Everything seems to be going well in terms of uh, uh, the stream. So I'm glad. Uh, there's a com I saw a comment from somebody says uh, this POG. I'm not sure if that's just a name or it's just a uh, something that came out. But uh, yeah, if you wrote something, it didn't come through. Um, VIS POG. So um, yeah, so there. Back to the same thing right there, right there with the eyebrows. But in the eyebrows, I don't want to overdo them because they're not that dense for a person, right? For a portrait, they're not. 
you can actually see people's uh, skin through some of the eyebrows, especially where they feather out. So that's a little, you know, harder. It's a, just more involved. Just try to get that to work. Um, and it takes more time. And all of this stuff can be worked out until you're, you're content. But, um, you know, you got to move on. Obviously, you can't, you can't dwell on it all the time. And once you get something that seems like it works, um, the results that I'm getting, at least from doing portraits and stuff like this, is like a, like a fuzzy image. But even though it's a fuzzy image, it's like super saturated and stuff like that. So it's got, it's, it's kind of like has its own look, right? Um, is it good? I don't know. I mean, um, it's, it's obviously not as good as, let's say, the nice renders that you would get if you actually get a model and then put the actual textures on it for skin. I'm not sure if I'm back. Um, I'm checking the stream health here. I'm not sure if I'm back, but I did get a disconnection. I noticed for a disconnection, I noticed that right now. Really quick. I've been monitoring the health, and for whatever reason, it looks like it may have been OBS that disconnected. That's disappointing. Somehow. It's not on my end. Uh, the, ex the, 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 the connection is good. Doesn't look like it's on my end, but yeah, it disconnected. I just got the notice. I'm not sure how much I I, I, I talked about it. I'm not going to go back. I just paused the video. Now I'm going to continue playing it. Um, so yeah, I went back to work on the mouth. And yeah, in the preview, it looks like it's going through. I don't get any feedback, so hopefully it goes through. And I'm not just talking into an empty microphone, right? The empty room. Talking into the empty room. Talking about uh, Formula One racing. Never ever did I watch Formula One racing. <laughs> like the actual races, I didn't. I've only been watching the three series that they have on Netflix. And, uh, you know, it's just interesting. You know, they always have this British voice narrating. You know, they're coming around the bend and it's the last race of the season. You know, they'll do that. And, you know, you know, it's just a voiceover actor, right? Putting the, the, the documentary video together but it still sounds like there's somebody narrating and doing play-by-play -play on the radio somewhere um which is exciting obviously and then they they feature all these people that are just contending against each other to try to be the fastest um so where was i yes it's, it's still back the same old smearing and and what what's going on did it freeze stream excellent uh okay Stream is stream health is still excellent. All right, so more of the um, yeah, just so this this may get a little long. I suppose I should have probably uh, viewed this video beforehand. Um, yep, same same deal. It's just just uh, try to get those lips to 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 shine. Try to get them to come out a little bit more and and. Um, and try to get the shadows right without, without, uh, without making them too dark and then without making it too bright. Because once you make it too bright, also, you get a different, you get a different feeling for what's what's happening there. So, yeah, great teeth, huh? Who knew that people have great teeth? It's just if you don't do that, it looks super bright. Obviously, it's not going to look right. They have. They have to be fall. They have to be in shadow inside the mouth, and all you need is a suggestion, and that's about enough for most digital photos. If I were to go up in resolution, this would obviously not work out. At this point in time, I found out, or not, I didn't find out. I'm looking at it, and I'm thinking I'm not happy where the chin is at the bottom. He's got his mouth open. And therefore, he should have, his chin should be lower, right? Um, and so, uh, I'm noticing that now, and I noticed it a little bit when I was um, when I was working there. So, um, I decided to start moving it down, and I did it by painting. I didn't I didn't uh, bring in the image the way I did before and use uh, the sculpt tool, but so with painting there, just push it down a little bit. It's going to happen here soon. 
every so often what I'm doing, so I'm showing this another day. Um, every so often where, when I'm, um, when I'm working with this, I have to pull out. You have to pull out so you can see it. But another thing that's happening is also I have another monitor, the image in another monitor, and that one is zoomed out. And it also has a different uh, uh, color, um, what do you call it, like color transform or color lookup. It has a difference in the color lookup, right? And so the color that I see in my screen here, my, my Cintiq, is little different than the color that I see in the other two monitors that I use, which for me it's fine because if it works in those, it's going to start looking better. And sometimes the one monitor, the cheapest monitor that I have, just cannot reproduce some of the colors that I'm producing here in this Cintiq. And the other, the other one does, but it does not have the same contrast. So um, I just use the combination of both, and I look at I look at all look at it in the three monitors, and I try to see if I can get the the um, the likeness or just the indication or the suggestion of what it is that I'm trying to draw, right? Uh, when uh, by looking at the different monitors and so on. And um, oh, my coffee already went cold. No way. Let me see. I got my blender cup, by the way. I'm not sure. No, I can't be seen. I'm playing the video, so pretty soon I'll be able to um, uh, switch the camera once it's done. It's not. Uh, how far is it to go? So it compressed. Like I said, it was at. So it took me several hours, three days, and several hours each day. So let's estimate six, six to eight hours. I'm just estimating. I didn't. Um, it's in the videos. But um, oh, yeah, so there I'm. I'm going to. I'm going to start uh, working. What I'm doing there is I'm going to start working with the shadows. I'm not liking where they are under the hat and around the eyes. They still kind of pop out too much, or they're, they're just not where I like it. So I'm creating a mask that only lets me uh, use another layer to multiply over this one to start making it a little bit more dark here and there because the top of the eyes were just popping out too much. The top of the face or the top of the face from the eyes up were popping out too much in, in lightness, but naturally you have the shadow from the, from the uh, hat that you just have to have that perception that the hat is casting a shadow downward. So, and it's very subtle too because obviously the camera has a flash in it. Or, or it seemed to, I don't know, it seems to have brightened up the face a little bit, you see. Uh, in terms of the light source, the picture itself was inside of a building. And when you have buildings with all sorts of lights, it really just, you know, bland, you know, makes everything bland, makes everything just flat, flattens out a lot of colors. I've had people show up before and say, hey, I want this here. I want this image of this person here. And some people that don't, you know, they don't understand... Um, like, though, I want this reproduced here, and it's a picture, sometimes from a phone or sometimes from um, you just, just people to learn that you can able, you're able to uh, reproduce, you know, images. Let's say paint. I haven't done a painting in a long time, but um, the last example that I can think of is uh, a screen print. I, I, I as, as a amateur screen printer, I decided to find out and learn how to screen print. So, so it's one of the things that I learned as a pastime you know just an amateur kind of thing and and so once you learn to do that you know people will come and they'll say here's uh, print this for me and it's like uh you know uh, screen printing has a, a, a variety of, of ways to to address it right and then the the to do a portrait on the shirt you'd have to do what they call process color and so that takes more <laughs> it takes a lot of work Let's just put it that way. Uh, but it's like, yeah, they're thinking that you're going to be able to print that. And so, but again, it's like you, they bring in a photo and the photo itself is not ready because it just doesn't, it just doesn't really stick out because uh, the lighting is just not good. You know, you just don't have um, the lighting that's good enough to show the form. So um, that happens all the time. So whenever you're looking for a photo or stuff like that, you have to look for that. Right there, what I did for the beard is I went up a layer, obviously, and and I I went I have like a like a a a, a brush that is just preset to stipple, and 
and I decided to use a stipple brush and I'm, I'm kind of, uh, you know, having a hard time with it right there because I'm trying to get it dark enough. What I really should have done is gone in and changed the curve, the, the actual curve, uh, pressure curve, um, to try to get them a little darker. But the, the, the plan to do it, and I did it a little bit with Ton and it kind of worked, the Ton's portrait, I mean, and it kind of worked. And so I'm here, I'm, I'm working it some more and trying to develop it some more. So the, what it is, is you stipple the beard, the color, and the just sim simple dots that, that you want. And then you use the blur tool to just pull them in the direction that you think that the hairs are growing. So it's going to give the indication that you, you know, the, the suggestion that you have, you know, uh, uh, those hairs in a, in a given direction. And then I'm going to come back over it the way that I did the hair on the sideburns and come over it with either the multiplier or the overlay uh, on a fine little pencil and then just pop some of those out so that they start sticking out. And so you just gotta see it at a distance and once they start popping out and giving the indication that you have little hairs, there, you know, I went too much on the blur so it's just a little guessing work until I get to where the blur kind of works and it gives you the indication that the hair is growing in you know, all these directions. Um, it doesn't look right right now but what I decided to do, because I didn't do it as dark as I did, and what I ended up deciding to do there is just duplicate the layer and go up in the opacity. You can see the opacity. The way I set up my material is I gave the, the possibility to give opacity beyond the one. So, you know, it's, it's just basically gave it more, just giving opacity beyond, beyond the one just to make it a little darker. Uh, that's what I'm doing right there. You see the blending mode is overlaid, overlay, and and then and some of those little hairs start looking like they're sticking out. And, and um, combined with the stuff that's underneath, then it starts looking uh, like a beard, a little bit like a beard. So there I'm using, uh, there's a layer, the layer 22 that's off to the right. It's basically a layer that you're mixing in there just black, right? Uh, and so that it, or, or gray in that case. And then it's using a blending mode in the material. The blending mode is multiply. So you very subtly go in there and you start drawing with the standard texture brush that's just smooth, right? But it starts uh, smoothing out the starts smoothing out the, uh, uh, I'm sorry, starts uh, darkening up in a smooth way uh, the, uh, the, the, um, the layer. And the layer underneath then starts getting darker. The layers, there's no way to, so whatever you put that has a particular blending mode here, the way I have it set up, it is going to affect every layer below it. It doesn't, there's no way to say, for me to say do these and not the others. I don't know if, if there'll be enough people that will get excited about, you know, fixing the painting tools in Blender and, uh, you know, getting to a point where you would have a layer system. If you could get a layer system in Blender, um, I'm pretty sure some people would jump on it, meaning that you don't have to do what I'm doing here with uh, with the template that I've done. And you just have, you go to the uh, either rendering tab or you open up a, a, you know, an image viewer and you could get layer system um, with the layer system, even with the simple tools, if you had a layer system, I'm sure you get some people that would just uh, jump on using that. Uh, that's my thought. I don't know. So what I'm doing there is that I'm noticing is like I want to finish the painting now. I want to frame it out. Now he's a head that's flowing somewhere. So I decided to add a scarf. I'm sorry. The scarf is in the photo. I was I was thinking about not doing it because it was going to be more, you know, you have to get into drawing the folds and everything. Uh, but but you can't because you have a head that's just hanging. It's just not hanging. It's just floating, I mean, in the air. And so I decided to uh, go ahead and draw the scarf. And at this kind of point in time, I'm thinking about drawing uh, the scarf like um, it's like a thin scarf, but still just making it green. The photo itself does not have a green scarf. It has a scarf that has uh, little, um, what do you call them? <laughs> I forgot now. You call them the little... Um, the little leaves, is it a shamrock? I'm thinking right now, I think I'm drawing a blank. I'm thinking it's a shamrock. But the little, the, the clovers, the, the, the four leaf clovers, I'm not even sure that's the name for it. But the, you know, the, you get lucky when you find a four leaf clover, so you have a little three leaf clover. So it has the, it has the, the uh, 
the 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 three leaf clovers there or, or on the on the uh, scarf at this point in time I'm experimenting how I can add those because I'm not liking the way that just the green one looks I could have left it here and said I'm done but I decided why not let's try to see if I can draw those in there but the color of the scarf the actual color of the scarf is black with the printing so that you know that I didn't want to go there but uh, but and then it's not only that the scarf itself is a, a material that is uh, more translucent very thin material so it's black with a very thin material and so the person that's wearing it obviously just took it and just bundled it up into a knot and put it very loosely as a tie um, so that's what appears to be in the picture so I'm thinking how can I do that and then and so then I decided let's see how it goes and I just decided to paint it black and then experiment um, that's not intended to work with the green underneath um, but I do try to salvage the green that's underneath um, so there it also has the white clovers what I decided to do there is is basically do a render and blur it <laughs> um, just to see how it would look brought it in projected it onto another one of those layers there above and then trying to mix it uh, but I'm trying to salvage there what I already drew the shadows that I drew on the gray on the green one but it won't work not through a mix or through another blending mode that I was just experimenting with it's not really working so I resolved to at one point in time it says what if I can I, I say I'm gonna try to extract the black and white or just the values out of this one and there I'm moving the, the contrast and trying to just brighten it up because it's too bright so basically trying to bring that one in and multiply it over this one which is what I end up doing but it doesn't really work either so I end up at that point then just saying well I'm gonna have to basically draw it again and that's what I do but I don't draw it what I do is when it starts looking fuzzy like that I said maybe I can just work with the images and then just use the draw tool the pencil tool there to um, to try to give him again the suggestion that it has um, um, little ridges and uh, at the end of the day I decided not to dwell on it too much also because I knew that I was going to put text over it so I said maybe I can just leave it like that it's not gonna be a point of emphasis it's not and then now I just want to make sure that the scarf itself actually has an interaction with the skin with the shadows there and you know just giving it a little darker word the scarf would be obviously occluding light um, that would be what you would consider in blender ambient occlusion add some ambient occlusion to that where they meet and then you'd be you know you get the realism right and uh, let me see what I'm doing okay I'm going now <laughs> I'm almost at the end of my layers you can see I'm on layer 29 and I have a, uh, a layer that has been set to overlay and then there I am painting white onto it but very 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 subtly very low opacity right um, okay the ears do have like a little uh, light that's being re uh, not reflected but just like highlighting that back of the ears because there's light behind behind the, the image and I thought that was you know one of the things that gave a little bit more realism right I find that I didn't you know I, I was messy I didn't use my I didn't use my um, uh, masks while I was working there so I had to erase some stuff and it's getting very close to completion at this point I think it's getting very 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 close to the completion uh, now it's just a matter of contrast zooming out looking at it and just trying to get the right contrast so that it works and so for the contrast to work I want to see it at a good long distance and then up close so it's got to work on both and there I'm just looking at how to give it a background that's a little darker so that it sticks out a little bit and I just thought maybe I'll just give it the very very lazy just just rough background and then give it the text that uh, you know he's gonna be saying they're after my lucky charms um, like the cereal box or the cereal so see how they go over the scarf that's why I didn't bother too much on the scarf and now I'm formatting so this is like a portrait for uh, portrait format and placing it where I want to I scale it up to where I need to and so on and start testing with the prints I don't like the background or I did it it's not that I don't like it it's just that it's, I think maybe I can do something more so what I did is I opened up another 
instance of Blender. I brought in my template with a way that I can draw and stuff like that. And then so basically what I'm doing is black and white to draw my own, uh, what would be a, um, a mask, a little mask to use as a uh, stencil, a little stencil mask. And I drew it at, and I rendered it at 512 by 512. What I forgot is that when you do the mask is that you really want to have the, even though it's all black and you draw it in white, you want to have the alpha, meaning erase it all and just draw it in white. So you only see the white. And that's what's happening here. I'm trying to figure out why isn't it working with just the texture. So I decided to go to the texture mask, which the mask now says black, no, white, yes. The other one actually just draws based on the alpha. So what I was doing there is just trying to multiply that against that back, the black, the background there, just trying to multiply to see if it will just give a very subtle suggestion of those clovers all over the place. I decided to just do go back to the mix and just draw them over and over and over and over until I get something that it kind of looks um, the way uh, I want to. And then I very, I gave it some opacity to to uh, show some of the layer in the background that picks up some of the, you know, busy, gets a little busy in the background there. And that is it, I think. So much for the narration. Maybe next time I'll speed up, if I do another, another one of these next time, um, I'll speed it up to go faster. That's the end of the video. What it doesn't show there is that I forgot to give him um, eyelashes. <laughs> You know, so concerned with doing all this stuff, I forgot to give him eyelashes. Uh, so, yeah, he needs eyelashes. And uh, I did that, but I didn't record it. So, back to Blender. And that's it. Let me see if I have my there. Here's my Blender. So, back to Blender. So, this is the image once it's finished. Um, and, you know, there's obviously some stuff to be desired around here and so on. But so long as it just gives a suggestion. It can be worked longer. Another thing that can be done to make this more realistic is to upsample, you know, go take the image up and increase the resolution, upsample, and then come in with another layer over these once you have it done. And with the layer very subtly using some of the blending modes, uh, start adding some of the little uh, imperfections that you see in skin. And you build upon that and then you can get a little bit more realistic. But not for me, because for me, that's the end of this. This is a completion of one particular painting done completely in Blender. I know Blender is a 3D tool intended for doing other stuff, but uh, at this point in time, I'm using it for painting. Uh, I'm also using it for 3D, obviously, in my other uh, projects. Uh, but that's it. And so uh, thank you for watching. Uh, I've got a couple people that showed up. Uh, thank you for, 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 for coming in and just saying hi. And uh, next time... Um, I'll see how it goes, you know, uh, as far as posting, I'm thinking that uh, the posts that I've done so far have been uh, mostly geared to, towards doing something within the time frame that I do the live recording or the live stream or whatever it is. And that really limits the amount of work that you can put out there um, because it's either just instructional, which I always say it's not a tutorial because Blender's changing constantly. And then as an instructor, you have to really do a lot of work to make sure you're on top of that game, right, of teaching correctly. But um, so the tutorial process of doing some of this stuff, it's maybe, um, it's very limiting as, as, as far as what you can do with videos. So maybe in the forthcoming videos, um, I just got the idea now in this case, right, maybe I'll go forward and do it like, like uh, not like I did right now, maybe, uh, who knows, um, and try to show finished work more finished work. And so that's going to be my goal moving forward in terms of videos and so on. And uh, yeah, well, let me know if you liked uh, uh, the drawing. Let me know if it looks terrible. Let me know if Yeah, I got disconnected again. I just came back and um, it looks like I can uh, I'm, uh, there's a little something funny because it tells me the connection is excellent, but then all of a sudden I got dropped. I think I'm going back. I'm going to move it over, see if my preview changes here a little bit and just basically to end it here. Uh, to, just to have a conclusion to this. I'm waiting for the... There it is. I see the cursor and I see it moving. Okay. All right. Well, thank you for watching and goodbye. I'm not going to make this longer because it's not, uh, it's not ideal connection. All right. Thank you for watching and goodbye.